Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day, looking at different adages, different uh, sayings that are pretty commonplace and trying to weigh how we could look at them from a biblical perspective. And so I hope you're tuning into this. Uh, today, uh, I'm suggesting that we ought to consider the saying, not everyone has to like you. Now, is that a biblical concept? Not everyone has to like you. Well, we can certainly look at Jesus and we know not everyone liked him. So I guess to some degree that's okay. And yet we've got these passages like what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians that, that we are the aroma of Christ. Um, you know, Christians believe that, that there is a, an importance that people find something in us that, that even though they may not like us, um, at, at least seems appealing in this world. Now, some people just have a whole different set of priorities, and the more godly you are, the less appealing they're going to find you. Uh, they may even find you to be a patsy, a, um, a, um, just something worthy of discarding. So to me, as I'm thinking about this saying, not everyone has to like you, I think about it in terms of maybe why we do what we do. Are we living for the approval of others or are we living for the approval of God? If we're living for the approval of others and we want everyone to like us, I do think that's a path to um, frustration, a path to uh, doing things we shouldn't be doing, um, a, a path uh, that, that is maybe even the common path. Uh, it is the road more taken, not less taken. Yet, if instead we're living our life to please God, then I think we're in sync with where we need to be. And there are going to be a lot of people, I hope and trust, who do like us because there are a lot of people who like and appreciate godliness. And by the same token, there are going to be some people who are turned off, who reject us. But that's okay as long as they're not rejecting us because we're obnoxious. You see, we can never use that adage, not everyone has to like you, as an excuse to justify bad behavior on our part or a failure to plug into others on our part. It needs to be part of a total package of recognition that... that we would like to be a good aroma to other people. We'd like to be winsome. We'd like to be liked because that can increase our influence and, and the voice that we have into other people's lives. That's all a good thing. But, but if we're living where that's our focus, it's not a good thing. I think as long as we put our focus on God, then those that like us, fantastic. Those that don't like us, Ugh, that's the way it goes. Now, before I close off, because I've got maybe another minute, let me tell you that there's another saying that's related to this, and it's from Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln said, the best thing to do with to get rid of an enemy is to make them a friend. And I do like that. So if there are people out there that, that don't like us, we don't ever want to compromise our character or compromise our godliness. We don't want to seem to, to just be desperate for the approval of others. But I don't think it's wrong for us to set out within the framework of living to please God, set out to try and turn an enemy into a friend. It's not a bad way to go. All right, we're going to look at more adages tomorrow, but this is it. This is your video thought for today.